Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Lightshare. Today we have a very special guest, someone that we've been looking to get like here for a while. And if you haven't seen him already, there you go, Darmar the one and only. Markovic. The, the one, one and only, only. Darmar. Uh, the one and only. Welcome to the show, man. So Thanks for coming. For those of you who've been hiding under a rock, maybe Darmar, you can talk a little bit about yourself and what you've been up to. I would love you to give a better introduction of myself, please. I, I, no. I introduce myself. I, I couldn't. I couldn't live up to the. I couldn't live up to the expectation. <laughs> no, no, you can. I like your voice, and uh, I think it would suit very good in giving introduction to me when we are speaking and everything. But yeah, guys, thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, for making this happen. And I'm very happy to finally be on some podcast after some time because there wasn't an opportunity, there wasn't time, but finally we have some time to talk about everything that your public is interested in from art to other stuff. Are you going to come back with your podcast at some point? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> it's such a tough question. You know, I, I'm still getting messages and I'm very surprised because sometimes I thought I'm very annoying and nobody's listening to my podcast, but I'm still getting messages where people ask me, where is the podcast? Why are you not doing it anymore? And so on. So maybe this is the moment so I can answer why am I not doing It's a Dharma anymore. And the reason is uh, because when Corona hit, uh, the podcast was growing really fast, really, really fast. And then Corona hit and everybody started to do podcast. And the problem was not that everybody was doing podcasts. The problem was that there was not enough artists. And every podcast, you would hear the same story. Because artists couldn't catch up in one year to make a whole new career and whole new story. So for me, it became, it became like I didn't want to do it anymore. Because I, I saw that it's not going to work out. But I think that you're, this is the time that you should start again podcast now that we are working. Because again... A lot of podcasts started, but they fell down after two years because it's not an easy task, as you know, guys. Maybe it mm. looks easy to to make a podcast, but to organize everything, to prepare everything, it's a nightmare. So that's one of the reasons. However, I have some other plans in my head. With uh, It's not going to be podcast probably, but I have some other plans with that maybe in the middle of this year if I'm more free with it. Awesome. Yeah, well, oh. I bet it is kind of complicated man like tell us about it we're three hosts and we live each like on a different side of the planet <laughs> so it's pretty complicated to kind of um, coordinate you know especially because of the time zones and all that stuff but yeah man i i was wondering was that like just uh like your impression like a feeling you had or like when you say oh people lost interest and stuff like that because i was watching it you know I was following yeah, your yeah, podcast. That's, that's my personal, I apologize. It's my personal okay, opinion. Okay. Because there is always new new people that want to hear new stuff, mm -hmm. the old stuff. It's not it's not a problem. But when I opened any podcast, for example, mine, I'm not gonna lie, and I open it and I open other podcasts where the same artist is and another, it's literally the same podcast. Even mm -hmm. though maybe I'm giving different energy and everything, but that artist poor man or poor woman, they can't make a new life in one year, you know, and to make a new subjects. It's an old story. So yeah. it's same with me. And but don't you that's think that's the point? Like, don't mm -hmm. you think like that's kind of the point of like that's why I watch it's a Dharma and not something else because it's it's you. You're the host. You make it like unique in a way. Like we can argue to a certain too point. Again. You flatter me too much. <laughs> you flatter me too much. Man. You flatter no, me too much. <laughs> but seriously, that's that's what like, dude anything is saturated nowadays right we can argue that yeah. that's that's a thing like who wants to be a youtuber nowadays there's tons of millions of like million subscriber youtube youtubers out there but there's a reason why they would watch you instead of all of them like i think i was talking to you andre about this the other day right where you said dude it's always the same energy like hey what's up guys you know today blah, blah, blah. yeah you there's know? the like YouTuber and then energy, you know. It's like a template, right? So people I think they appreciate when you come up with something unique. And I don't think we fall onto any of those categories. Like we're not following any template, anyone. Like we're just doing this as it comes from the inside. And that's it. And that's why, you know, that's why I felt about your podcast. And I think you should really embrace it, man. It it makes a really cool and unique thing. So yeah. 
Thank I you. don't know. My two cents. Check it out. <laughs> we, will, we, will see, we will see. You see, Dom didn't check my podcast. I'm now. I'm now not flattered anymore. I'm not. So, so anymore. haven't reached all the, all the possible audience yet. You know, so you need to keep pushing. That's uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Here, I have a new subscriber. You see, I have a new subscriber. Three thousand and five hundred. Oh, <laughs> but Just subscribe. You, you know. Uh, when it comes, Adrian, that you said templates and stuff like that, mm -hmm. YouTubers, hey, la, 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 and so on. Yeah. What's the uh, formula, you know, they always ask for? But there is no formula. There is of course just, not. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I call it the garbage can because you literally take, I don't know, you take this, you take this, you take everything. And the more information you have inside of you in that garbage can because your brain is a garbage can there is a lot of unnecessary uh, stuff stuff inside but the more you gather and the more you can process it through you the more unique because you become and and uh, everybody is always asking about the formula and that's quite normal to me because everybody most of the people like shortcuts and absolutely there is there is no mathematical formula I, we are now talking here there is four people here there is adrian there is andre there is dharma and there is dom we are completely different people, but by being different and just using what you have in your garbage can, it's what makes you stand out. The more, the more you use it, the better you will stand out. What makes a difference and what formula for me is in anything, not just art, is questioning yourself what do you want with your, with your life. Like, what do I want to do? Because... 99% people have no clue what they want. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to, that's, that's quite normal. But how do you want it? What do you want? And yeah. during my life, I examined myself a lot. What do I want? And many times when I thought that I knew that I, what I wanted, eventually it turned out that it was a complete lie. Because there is a society that's telling you, there is a parents that are telling you, there is your teacher from kindergarten that is still stuck at your head, what he was telling you at age of seven, and so on and so on. And the person needs to find what they want. Once, once they find out who they are and what they want, and everybody has something, there is no lie about it. That's when the things start to be much smoother. That's that secret formula for me. And uh, I think that people should embrace, embrace that and let themselves be lost. Because many times uh, students, young artists, designers, they send me a message on Instagram asking me how, how they can become better and then they start talking i want to be i want to become for example one of the main things that they ask me always is um i want to become really good at uh, design should i use 2d or 3d that's the main question it has been in this industry question forever but then the next question is you ask them what do you want to do on what do you want to work and they say well i want to be a modeler now we are all experienced here we know that designer and modeler are not the same so technically, they never ask themselves what they want. They just heard it from somewhere. They just heard it. They never investigate it. So you need to find what you want really to do. That's that's the thing. And you wouldn't believe how many times that happens. Do you ever messages. like uh, related to what you said about like uh, what do you want? How are you going to do it? And all that stuff. Do you ever wonder something like why do you think you want those things? Like, because that for me okay. was always a big question that I, I don't know, I was like four or five years ago, I was trying to kind of write down these three things, you know, like who I am and who do I want to be, what do I do and what do I want to do in the future? And then the third one was, that one took very long and I'm still working on it. You know, my why, like why, why all of this? You know, why do you want to become whatever you want to become? Why do you want to do whatever you want to do? That's kind of a hard question. You know, <laughs> like you might feel the urge and temptation to come up with like an easy answer. Oh, because I want to, you know, because it's what I want to do. It's, it's what makes me happy, you know. <laughs> but beyond that, dude, there's a whole story, I swear. So, yeah, I think not many people think about that too deep and they just roll with it and then they end up like you said you know in a place where they might feel regretful like i don't even know why i came here you know <laughs> why did i choose this path why did i so i guess it helps you know to be more aware of that kind of stuff but yeah 
What do you guys My think? My question for me is always such an interesting question because as you said, it's not simple. It's very simple when you come to it, but to come to it, it's very complicated and it's the most wrapped up question. What I mean, wrapped answer, sorry. So mm -hmm. it has layers and layers and layers and layers. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the things, if you analyze it, I analyze it quite long, both intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to say it, from meditation to yoga to everything I went through it. I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the, the, the best to answer anything, but this is just my humble opinion. Uh, you will see a lot of times when people are doing something and they don't know why, there will be a layer of lying why they are doing it. And we call it white lies in Serbian. But I will give you an example because it's a very, very clear example. Every time something goes bad in work, in relationship, in anything, people call on, on the subject of them being good. For example, uh, I, I want to help people. Uh, trust me, 90% of time, they don't want to help people. They want to help themselves. And it's such an unconscious mm -hmm. thing to say it because society will accept it immediately. If you say, I want to help people, yeah, immediately society accepts you. Immediately, because it, it's, it's objectively, because it's objectively mm -hmm. like humble. Because you know? it's like, a good oh, thing. Nice, you, yeah. you want to help people. No, nobody can object, objectify exactly. and say, who are you to, to help people and so on? You know, mm -hmm. who, who are you? And yeah. immediately they start to wrap it. And, it's, and you start adding layers to your cause. You start adding layers. You start adding stuff. Yeah. And it's becoming a bigger and bigger lie. Because you never come to the real solution why you want to do it. I went through that kind of things. I know for myself, hiding behind the lies. Uh, it's such a deep subject for me. And eventually, uh, people need to understand I'm doing something because I just want to do it, for example. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you will get to the answer why you want to do it, but just the feeling that you want to do something. For example, tonight I want to go and go out and get drunk. Nobody's going to say, say that to you if, they're, if you're not close. But it's just a feeling. I want to do it. It's just a feeling. There is no intellectual explanation behind it. I've, I'm just feeling like that. Not that mm -hmm. I'm going to get drunk because I don't drink. But, but the point of story is it's an emotion. Exactly. And we as society are forgetting to deal with emotions. It's an we impulse. Are, everything is rather. super intellectual. Sorry? It's, it's an emotional impulse in a way. You know, the like... emotional impulse. And we are everything. Society in the last 20 years has developed intellectually so much it's insane. We over intellectualize everything. Everything we need to to write why, how, for example, everything is in our head. Mm -hmm. And we are forgetting that, that not everything is in the head. And that's why a lot of people have anxiety, depression, and so, so many other things. It's such a complicated subject. I'm afraid that, that we will scare off your guests who, that are watching this if we continue in this direction, but I can go on forever with this. I would be glad if we could continue with this because I'm it's something yeah, that I'm deeply connected with as oh, well, you know, this kind of subject it's, matter. The host is asking me that I need to do it. So let's yeah, go it's, it, okay, so Colin, okay, before we go into the rabbit hole, uh, rabbit hole like, <laughs> so, so we're talking like a bunch of things already. And it seems to me like a common thing is getting to know yourself because then you can also be honest with yourself about your own emotions and like you learn how to deal with them and then you don't overanalyze or be like super uh, rational or something, which is mm -hmm. one of the causes that you were mentioning about like anxiety and stuff. So how did you came to this uh, um, phase where like you know how how to deal your basically like you know how to analyze yourself and deal and be completely honest with yourself and to know what you want because it seems to me like when you say people need to know the, what they want like have you got to that point already do you feel like you're super safe on what you want right now or is something that can change and how did you dealt with like throughout your life to learn the pathway to like know yourself before we jump into the more like deep emotional stuff like how did you got to that point Okay, so I'm a human being, so I'm not perfect. I make mistakes even with knowing what I want. It can change, but pretty much the similar, it's always similar path. Uh, very, very simple. It's, it's a long answer, but it's very simple. Uh, I cracked in 2014. 
like uh, my I, I I was sick I got very sick and uh, when you get sick uh, everybody leaves you I had a really nice lifestyle I had a profession that was going good I had a girlfriend then and uh, overnight due to some events that happened I got uh, bad this is first time ever in my career that I'm speaking about this and uh, I got really really bad uh, which led to me <clears throat> losing job, which led to me being kicked out of Italy. I couldn't get papers, which led to me getting kicked by my girlfriend, which led to me while I was spending time in hospital, doctors learning, looking what's wrong with me and trying to give me antidepressants uh, to, because today's society is all about antidepressants. You have my, my leg is hurting me, here you go, antidepressant. My head is hurting me, here you go, antidepressant. My eyes hurting me, here you go, antidepressant. Everything that they can describe what's happening, um, uh, they give you antidepressants. I was strong against them. Uh, I was losing weight. I was losing balance when walking. Anyhow, to cut the story short, uh, I was completely alone. One friend stayed there, two maybe. And all of a sudden, I had a huge drop in my life. From a successful young designer to... To part from party party boy to somebody who lost everything like i had everything that anybody wanted and that was the moment that when you're down you start to examine everything intellectually especially if you didn't go through teachings of spiritual and stuff like that that i had to go through then you start to overanalyze everything and now 2021 i'm super healthy it has been the best thing that happened in my life. And uh, one year of spending in hospitals, uh, checking everything and so on, that's when I realized uh, maybe my legs are not working good, maybe I have no friends, maybe I have nobody, maybe I'm down, but my desire for design never stopped. My design, even when I couldn't sleep, I was thinking about design and everything, and the, my career completely broke. So I had spiritual teacher last five years. She, it's a woman, it's a she, and uh, she has been leading me through everything. I recovered thanks to her, uh, grateful forever for it. And uh, during that time that I spent with her, I started to understand many things about me, about world, and about my purpose on this earth. And that's why I started to work on Insight 44. And uh, it was such a, it's a, such a liberating moment now when I see, because everything that shouldn't be there left. And everything that should be there started to come. Everything was coming from friends. You wouldn't believe what kind of stories I can tell you about uh, when, when, when things open in you and uh, you start to attract things. You still can attract bad things. It's not that I don't attract bad things. People think once you're liberated, it's all... Well, you are on red. this podcast, aren't you? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liberated now here. I love the Matrix. And I'm, I'm just sad if I love the Matrix that I don't have my hair now, probably, if I'm still in the Matrix. But, <laughs> but when you leave, you know that they're all bald and without hair yeah. or anything. <laughs> but after that, I, I knew that Insight 44 had to be made. And I knew that I need to build Dharma career. And uh, during those teachings and everything that I went through, that's when I started to realize that I neglected my emotions for 24 years, literally. I neglected them completely. I didn't have emotions. I thought that I had them. I didn't have them at all. I wasn't in tune with them. Everything was intellectual, calculated, and so on and so on. And 95% of people are like that. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is, you know. It's like a so constant... That was my liberation. Yeah, I feel like it's a constant attempt, you know, to fit in like all the way through your childhood to your uh, teenager years, you know, you're constantly trying to do what others are doing just to be accepted in that group. And that, of course, always leads to those kind of problems of like a lack of identity, a sense of identity, like who I am, you know, you think you belong to this group, to this team, you know, you tend to 
I don't know, associate yourself to certain things just to fit in, even though you don't quite feel like, you know, belonging there. You kind of try to convince yourself and it it's not, I mean, your story is like what you described as the, the rock bottom of your, right, in, in your life. Like you, that year was your dark night of the hero, right? if we put it in like a hero's journey perspective like that's your rock bottom thing and from there you can only build upwards and first of all i'm happy that you made it out of that and not only you made it out but you kind of came out like in a quite you're more than (laughs) super successful (laughs) really inspiring way and i i follow you on instagram and i see sometimes when you post those instagram stories about yeah like these kind of details mostly about your book which also includes some inspiration stuff that you know it led you to it influenced you to create those kind of stories for your book and they were really really interesting man like the way i see it the way it's perceived is like you're like an underdog you know like very few people believed in you some people betrayed you some people did bad stuff to you and you persevered you kept going you kept pushing and never stopped believing in yourself you know of course you would have like those moments of like doubt and self-doubt and confusion but you never lost sight of your dream and i love it that you chose to kind of keep going with your ip your book and everything it's really inspiring, man. Thank you so much. I mean, the book was such a... Now when I look at it, the book was... Um, it was healing me. It was healing me because everything in the book that is designed is inspired by something that I went through in my life. In the, and there were, there were so many fucked up moments and uh, where I should have given up in my life and I should also given up in... Uh, in uh, in the book i mean uh, uh i think that life i don't think i know one sentence that uh, that was always mentioned to me and it's freaking true no matter how hard it is at this at that moment when that is happening and that, that is and this is and uh i'm giving a tribute even though she's alive but i'm giving tribute to this woman her name is dushica and she in the translation to english would be soul which i was missing i lost my soul and uh, she would always say remember one thing all all the situations and all the people work for me because life is giving you lectures absolutely it's like that i couldn't understand that because everything was shit apologize that i say that but everything was a shit for a very long time so you start to become a victim in your head mm-hmm. But I wasn't understanding how much I was growing that per- during that prior- period. One of my favorite sentences was always from a cartoon Mulan. And uh, I remembered that sentence when I was down. And the sentence was that flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of them all. And that's why that's what... Uh, Emperor says to the to the what's the name of the guy that uh, that doesn't want to talk with her because he's angry on her and after everything ends he looks at him and he says him that sentence and while I was going through all of this I would remember that sentence quite a lot in that period we can go into this stuff forever and guess what one day I'm walking on my building where I grew up it's all concrete everything is concrete but there is just one flower standing just one flower in the middle of concrete and growing you wouldn't believe how much strength that gave me no matter who i am no matter where i came from no matter that i have serbian passport no matter that my career crashed i'm coming back i'm coming back and i'm gonna do it next year next six months i would take art station challenge i would become let's say semi-famous in in this industry that would really make me pop out my health problems would start to be become better my uh, mental health started to become better. Of course, when you can walk, everything starts <laughs> being better. And uh, and uh, I just grew, 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 grew. And we have the armor now. So so that's 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 how it went, you know. 
it wasn't that it was all easy. It was literally up, down, up, down, up, down. But that's that's life. That's life. You can't avoid it. It's never rainbows only. It's never rainbows because there are so many lessons to learn. The higher you are, the stronger winds are. The more lonely you can become there. Uh, I can talk about uh, problems that I had in this industry. I had many from, and I will say this openly now on this podcast. I didn't talk about this openly on my social media. When I had my podcast, uh, I would get uh, messages from Serbian artists where they would threaten me that I shouldn't pretend to be smart. Who am I to to have a podcast? Who am I to build my career? And so on. Uh, that was the things that I was getting also in my inbox. It's, it wasn't only rainbows. I would get messages where people would be very happy and write me, thank you so much for podcasts and so on. I would get also these kind of messages. And uh, it was a huge lesson for me. So, 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 there, there, was, there was a lot of things that's under the surface. And uh, when all of that was happening, I started also people, to look people different, especially anger in people. There are many angry people in this world. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. I would approach anger differently with them and I wouldn't judge them. I would uh, ask myself why, why this soul is in such a pain. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it, was, it was such... Uh, so many lessons in that period of my career and life. Still, it's, cra still to be it's crazy, right? How much how much pain is out there yeah. that we we try to drown out with? It. Yeah, with some pleasure, you know, be it whatever: cigars, video games, porn, drugs, anything. Like food. Yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so there's so many things, and it's nice that you took that kind of path you know with that lady you mentioned and all your yeah your journey man of rediscovering yourself understanding who you are your nature the world you live in what's your and, and finally figuring out your purpose you know and and what you wanted to, to do and and knowing why and everything um yeah uh there, there's <laughs> There's so many things. I, I really like where, where this episode is going because these are the things that not only motivate me, but they really get to my inner layers, you know? Like, there's nothing that motivates me more than hearing someone else, someone else's story, you know? Like, you. How, how did you get here? How, how did you get started? Like what were your adversities and how did you overcome them and yeah like i remember your um that contest you know that the r station challenge with the the giant everybody remembers everybody remembers <laughs> uh earth e eater earth giant earth giant, earth yeah. giant. That was super cool, bro. That was the time that I got my first job as well. And I was kind of starting to kind of branch out in terms of like contacts, like, you know, moving around on Facebook and stuff. And I, I would see you back then. And then I met you in, in Croatia, finally. Um, yeah, 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 I just remembered. Yeah, th yeah. 2017, yeah, the um, IFCC thing. And I mean, look at you now, like, I was wondering now about the current state of your your project. Like, how how do you feel about it? Like, um, I read some stuff that kind of confused me in a way because I'm not sure. Like, the way I understood it was that you had to rush it a little bit to kind of release it soon because of some complications in terms of like papers and stuff like that. But I'm, yeah. When look, I'm you know I'm working on my own stuff too, right? Just like like Dom, Andre also has something. Um, but that legal stuff is what I think scares most artists who are coming up with their own stuff. Cause you know, there's like giant sharks out there <laughs> trying to get a bite a little bit of everything. And yeah, when I saw you kind of openly speaking about that, that's something that not many people do. And I think it's really helpful for people like us because yeah you're afraid of what you don't know you know so it'd be interesting to hear more about the process of 
inside 44, like all the yeah, yeah. Have to go through with that. There's yeah, so many things. Well. Copyright, right? We are talking about copyright and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. For instance, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think yeah. we can give like an overview of the project as well because it seems like okay. now we know the reason why it exists, so it carries a lot more weight behind everything that we say Holy about it. Holy so. shit, yeah. that's thick, boy! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's two years standing on that's my shelf. It, that's a door stop of a book. <laughs> so, crazy. So this, this can only happen to me, but I will tell you about Destiny and stuff like that. This is very important that I tell you mm -hmm. because uh, you see that the pages are falling out. And I will tell you one story before I start speaking about everything that has been happening in the last two years because this is standing on shelf and I couldn't uh, publish it. And I will tell you what happened in between. In between, I started uh, talking with Hollywood to sell it as a story and to sell it as an IP. But when you're an unknown artist and you speak open as I do, many people think you're naive. Uh, if I learned something about business is that uh, speaking openly in business, it's what saves business. So you need to say it openly how the things are. And unless you do that, you'll walk in mud. But people, when they hear like that, they want to use you. So I'll tell you one interesting story. I've been talking last two years to sell it with many different producers. Uh, it has been a circus, literally circus for, with many of them. Uh, using the advantage uh, in many cases, trying to lure me in a spider's web. And uh, honestly, one day I'm going to release all the emails in a book to show what that people do. I'm not going to name anybody, but I will eventually do it. But I will tell you a story about the pages. So I've been speaking with some producers for some time and they are very interested. They want to take the book, want to pitch it to Netflix. So, so it, you won't believe how hard it is from Serbia to come to Netflix or to anybody. So you need to come to a middleman, which is a producer or a somebody agent, but you can't come to an agent. I will tell you about agents. I tried to come to them. Uh, then you call companies or send an email. They say with referral. Dear man, woman, whoever is on the phone, where do I get a freaking referral from Serbia? I can't get a referral. I'm sorry, sir. You can't get it. How do I talk with an agent? I'm sorry, sir, you can't get it. What do I do? I'm sorry, sir, you can't get it. You know, when they, when they just want yeah. to tell you, go away, go away. So I called from, from Serbia to USA. I even called them on the phones and you can't get a referral. So it's such a muddy waters you wouldn't believe. But eventually I came. And then we discussed for almost seven months. They want to take it. But they are now using opportunity because they see that I'm very easy to work with. And I don't know anything. I don't have anybody to ask. Nobody knows. Concept artists do work in this industry, but very rarely of them uh, know how to sell the IP, what are the processes uh, in between, so what are the prices, what are so on. And I don't have information. And they literally made me, in the eight months, I almost had the burnout, where I was literally working and writing a story for Insight 44. And uh, eventually, after five months, they asked me to send them the book, but don't want to sign the NDA. Don't want to send the ADA, but they want hmm. the book. And I'm like, I can't just give you something in your yeah. hands. You can literally take it. And so I started copyright. We will come to the copyright. That's a story for itself. And you are now in very muddy waters. You don't know anything. And many people get afraid of that. I never get afraid of that. I don't get afraid of unfamiliar situations because I'm just like that. I'm, I go forward. I just go forward and I know that eventually all the dots will connect. So these producers, we are talking, they are making me do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm doing everything that they should do. And eventually I send them the book. And you see that the pages fall out. This was printed in a very good printer shop in Serbia that costed 150 euros to print one book. Very cheap. And the pages are falling out. And at that moment, guys, we are talking now about, about the karma and everything. Not karma, sorry, about destiny. And I'm like, why the hell are pages falling out? I will look so unprofessional. Why the hell is this happening to me? 150 euros for this and it's falling out. That's around $180 for a book that I can print in USA for 35 bucks. What the hell am I doing? Anyhow, I send the book. And I'm talking about that moving forward that all the dots will connect. They get the book and eventually they come back to me and this is a real story, guys. They offer me 
1,000 bucks for Inside 44. For the 1, whole bucks. IP. That's it? <laughs> they, for option buyout, I will explain what option buyout is because they, they, don't, they know I'm not going to sell them. Option buyout is when you give the book to them, your property, your IP, for a certain amount of time, and then they try to sell it. And they give it 24 months, 1,000 bucks, which is 50 bucks, uh, 50 bucks per month. Prices are much higher than that, I can tell you immediately. But they offer me that, and I'm looking at them, and I can't believe what they're saying. To cut the story short. And by uh, the way, at, at this point, how long were you working on the, on the whole project already? Seven years. Seven, Se seven, seven years, years, and they offer you 1,000 yeah, bucks. Yeah. For option buyout, where they will try to sell it to Netflix and mm -hmm. to other guys, but they book you literally, and you can, nobody can else try. Prices for that are much bigger, but they are offering one thousand bucks. And I'm literally looking at them, and I can't <laughs> believe what they are offering me. Yeah. But to cut the story short, they return me the book, and I'm like, I can't get new producers. I can't get new people. What the hell is happening? Why? So the book returns. And I'm hitting my head because I don't have other people to sell the book. I don't have anybody else. Eventually, I will have that will go even worse. But, but eventually, there are always opportunities. To cut the story short, my friend comes after 15 days and he's like, oh, the book, I want to see it. Open it. I don't give a damn. At that moment, I didn't give a damn about the book anymore. And he opens it. And he's spinning it. Because in my head was... If they are telling me this is because they went through the trust, trusted people, if they are telling me that this is 1,000 bucks, they are giving me the reasons why, then maybe I am delusional about this. You know, maybe I'm delusional. But he's spinning and I just hear, <coughs> the pages start to fall out. To cut the story short, they never opened the book. They never checked the material. They never checked the material. It was... They gave me delusional quote that they just hope I will jump aboard. I mean, that, that's it, pretty much. So Bait, that's, baiting you, that's baiting me, baiting me. Yeah. Uh, with producers, it's quite hard to be honest. I still haven't met the right ones. I had offers. Oh Jesus Christ! From me giving it from free to me putting uh, their name in front of mine that they created these as authors, to me giving. Uh, all the rights when I die that their grandchildren get the, the 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 book so they earn the money if it's sold to me giving half of the book to them uh, like literally giving half of the book and pages are written which designs I'm giving to them if the artist is not careful and I'm very careful a lot of people would fall for that because all the sentences are very <laughs> very strangely yeah. written you know and if you're not careful I can only imagine how many artists had problem with that so so yeah that's that that's what has been happening with producers uh i backed down four months ago and i said uh, no more waiting anymore 2022 i'm either going to nft with this or i'm publishing it as a book there is no more wait i can't wait anymore hollywood if the hollywood wants the book they can call me after it's published and we can negotiate everything so yeah that only reflects how much value is in that project. If they were kind of going that far as to ask you for like, okay, but my grandchildren will get the <laughs> get the book and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. right? And and going out of their way to offer you all those possibilities that only favors them the most. Um, I'm sure you don't. But just in case you were kind of doubting or having any doubts about your own project and stuff like that, like maybe I overestimated the value of my project. Maybe this is not something the world really wants. I'm sure at that moment it became more, you know, clearer than ever. <laughs> like true, to just see true. Hollywood stuff. You. Yeah. I will just... show you the book. I will show you the book when we finish this. I can't unfortunately show it to everybody, but I will show you. Uh, I think you will be very pleased what you will see. I'm very shocked. I will just say that this, how much information is inside from the text to designs to everything, took me one year and two months to organize it. So it all speaks with itself. 
one year and two months just to organize it. So, so can you imagine how much information is inside? I couldn't just uh, give it to a graphic designer and say, layout designer, please organize. Mm -hmm. It would never work. It would never work. Literally, that period of the book, my head was hurting the most, honestly. Have you tried ever like doing something like that, like working with someone on because I'm, I'm really interested in, on this topic because I feel, you know, in my experience that it's really hard for me to communicate like all the the, the little details, the little connections, because if, if it's based and inspired by such a personal thing, like your own life experiences, then I'm like, at one point, I, I would feel like bothered, you know, to have to kind of constantly say no, because that you know that's not about that this has to go like this because you know it's based on this and it's like a mental map you have that you can't really get out there for whoever you're working with so that's why i was interested in knowing if you've ever tried to find someone like a like a ui designer or whatever the people working on you know laying out book designs and stuff so, so yeah i worked with my friend her name is Antonella. We know each other since Italy. She is Montenegrin. Hi, Antonella. And she worked as a layout designer on it. And uh, But she knew me really good. She already knew me really good. We became really good friends, her and I, and uh, she knows everything that I think. But speaking about that, uh, this is my advice about personal projects. When I started working on uh, Inside 44, nobody gave a shit about it. When I say literally nobody, my parents would ask me, why the hell am I doing it? And eventually, as the project grew, everybody wanted to jump aboard. Eventually, uh, because many characters are inspired by my friends, uh, I have different races. A lot of them laugh when they see it. Yeah, I remember you put Spirit on in there, too. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was like there was a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually everybody wanted to be in the book. So they started to get angry. Why the hell am I not in the book? I was in your period from 20 to 23 years old. Even ex-girlfriends would be, be, be like, why the hell am I not in the book? Why the hell this? Wow. Where were you four years ago when I was literally sitting at home and crying? But why am I telling you this story? Because I love this. Your personal book. I know what comes because next. This is your, <laughs> this is your personal book. Yeah. Let yourself be egoistic when you're creating it because you know what you're creating after all it's a personal project mm -hmm. it's different when you're working on a job then you need to communicate with people you need to tell them this or you need to tell them that but if it's yeah. yours and it's this coming is from you. the heart this book was, it's you it's you and uh, you won't believe how comfortable i started to feel because people always try to get you on your egoistical you don't want to cooperate with us you won't believe how many producers told me that after I told tell them guys I'm not giving you your name in front of mine that you created inside 44 oh you have to work this is that kind of industry you have to work with other people yeah I have to work but that doesn't mean I need to give you everything for free I'm not dumb so it's it's different being egoistical and rational so if it's your personal project do it by yourself uh, in the beginning, I asked some artists to help me with characters. I didn't do characters when I started. They were like, see you around, Darko, see you around, Darko. And uh, I didn't take it personal because, after all, it's your personal project. You can't take it personal. I mean, it's yours. <laughs> so you can't, they don't, they have their stuff to work on. But some of them were very rude. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But again, I don't have anything against them selling. But then, Eventually, after it started to develop, I have a lot of followers on Instagram. I started to get offers where people want to work on it for free. Even some of them that rejected it. But then again, I am the one who's choosing. So how did you feel if when, you saw, when, when you saw those people free? interested? How did you feel like? I felt that the project is going, doing really good. It's same like your ex-girlfriend when she starts to chase you. You know that you're doing something good. <laughs> you know that you're yeah. doing something good so 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 but it's my life it's my this is mine you're not this is my bubble you're not entering this bubble unless i invite you and you have all the right many people are ashamed of that of course when we are talking about work 
you have to talk with others, you have to negotiate with them, you have everything. But if it's your personal work and it's coming from here, it's yours. It's yours and you can do whatever you want with it. No matter what society tells you or... It's such a psychological game, guys, especially when you're doing something with heart. I see a lot of psychological games yeah. around people that they play with, with others. But if it's heart, yours. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I did this for you in the past. You you owe me part of your project too, right? Like, let me work on it. And, That's and why you, I don't you accept my name. That's why I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't accept favors. Um, yeah. In in my, uh, I grew up in a tough neighborhood in Belgrade, really tough neighborhood, and uh, I, I I learned lesson very fast that uh, some of my friends would borrow money from some tough guys. And they would borrow money from them and they wouldn't have to they they would pretend that they're not gonna return it that didn't go so well and uh you don't ask a favor if you're not gonna return something so so that that's how how it works but, but were those, they like also testing? Favors are very, they're very tricky favor yeah they were testing if they can get away with it okay eventually some of them got really screwed but yeah. why am i saying that favors are very tricky because there are a lot of sharks with favors. So you never know which shark is on the other side and it will bite you or not. So, yeah. so I don't take... Uh, uh, if I do something for somebody, it's not a favor. I did it because I want to do it. If somebody does something for me, I will try to repay. But if the person is immature and pretends that I owe him more, then we are quitting the communication, literally. And I, that, that's, that's how I perceive it. You have to be a lot uh, very mature, in my opinion, to take favors and to give them because mm -hmm. many people become egoistic. Oh, they hired you because of me in the studio or yeah. I don't know, uh, because of this. Dude, you never said anything about me. I literally was standing at the same bar with you. That doesn't mean that you got me uh, f uh, hired. You won't believe how many situations I saw in industry where people are fighting over that. And I'm like literally pulling my hair that they are fighting over that. How mature are you? So, yeah. A lot of ego, I guess. A lot of uh, yeah. trying to, you know, attribute all those things that that happened because of me, you know. And, and you're here only because credit. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Credit. That's the Just, word. Yeah. They all want. I, I know. I've seen that situations a lot. I've seen a lot of situations like that. And uh, but I also saw some very mature people about it, and I always try to learn from them. I also try to learn from stupid mistakes of immature people. I'm not saying that I'm the most mature people in this world, definitely, but uh, I try to learn from mistakes that I saw, that I made. And I think that's very beneficial. Also, one more thing that I'm seeing in this art industry, that everybody's hardcore working, war hardcore working, 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 working. Everybody's posting how much they're working, but nobody's working uh, with a plan. Uh, what I mean by that, I see people that do the same sketch for 365 days in the in the year you're not going to learn much if you're doing all the time the same. So hmm. you need to be out of comfort zone. I, I think you all guys know that how painful it is being out of comfort zone. I went from car designer to spaceship design to character design to fashion design to layout design. I God, God only knows on which, which branch I wasn't literally. But that's why I grew so fast because I was uncomfortable for five years. That's the only way to become a successful designer. Work hard and be very uncomfortable. Everybody perceives uh, art as something fun and something, something. Uh, how can I say it? Something easy. Yeah. Yeah, it is easy. There is a lot of artists, but all the great ones are the most hardworking person people in the world. I trust me on that. Trust me on that. Most mm -hmm. hardworking people from any of them that I met. Their work ethic was insane, insane. I think that if any of us did something different, even played football, I think we would be superstars with this kind of work ethic. And I'm not joking when I say that, literally, like. Mostly the hobbyists, I feel, say, yeah, it's easy, <laughs> or yeah. it's fun. Can't of learn much don't from a smooth the road. To be the, the superstar, the pro. You know, I was always disgust. That's the right word. Disgust. When I'm on some freaking festival and some freaking people that are still not there 
mm-hmm. start to comment about high-end artists. Ah, he doesn't give a damn. He's a high-end artist. He, he he can chill. He can chill. You know, you know, lowering his value, lowering his or hers value. He is on the top. He doesn't give a damn. We poor people, we need to grind harder. It's all on us, guys. If you worked as hard as he did or she, trust me, you would have blue under your eyes all the time, would be fatigued most of the time, have anxiety most of the time, and be on the top. That's what people don't don't understand. I, I discuss. There's I, I, always it's a price. Disgusting. It, it's disgusting to me when people are telling like that. Ah, he is chilling. He doesn't give a damn. When you're on the freaking top, it's the hardest. It's the hardest, no matter how easy it looks. Yeah, I have this this conflicting thought, you know, about like taking it easy and, you know, finding balance and I'm all for that. But I also feel like greatly moved by, you know, the determination and, you know, constant pushing and and sacrificing other th- other things to achieve something very specific you know which is just the prize that we were taught you just described you know like certain sorry certain um yeah taxing kind of signs on either your body your mind your life your social life anything there's always a prize so how far are you willing to go you know that's that's up to you i I very much respect anyone who commits to a specific quest that they devote their entire life to. And that's just freaking inspiring, man. Like to be able to continue down that path for so many years. And then, as you said, to get up there and maintain that level, not only to maintain and not only to stay there, but to keep climbing that mountain even higher and to keep conquering it. We understand it's not easy, you know, but many other people kind of sort of think that, yeah, but he's now more more experienced, so it's easier, you know. Now he has all that experience, so it's easier. That's why I respect so much people who climb up there and they're still trying to figure out like new ways, new combinations, new pathways, new, I don't know, it's, it's just unbelievable. Like... You may think, why don't they retire and that's it? Like, didn't they have enough? You know, they, don't they have enough already? Like, what else do they want? And they keep pushing, they keep climbing, they keep finding out new ways. You know, and and I find that super inspiring. Um, about that paradoxes, paradoxes were a really big part of my life in the last five years. Literally paradoxes in me and seeing it in other people. And there is that paradox. I'm a very blunt guy, very, very blunt, very direct. And there were so many sophisticated situations that I translated in the book with my friends and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I will never forget one scene. I put it in the book. It's it's a science fiction book as we, we, we talked already, but I translated it into my book. There is a lot of scenes from my life. But this uh, paradox uh, stayed in my... I still... <laughs> It's still very dear to me, and I always laugh when I think about it, how unconscious as beings we are. So we had some mess in our, with my friends. One guy borrowed money from us, from me, from one other guy, and he, 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 didn't, he didn't want to return us. And then we, uh, we found him. We were like, where are you going to give us the money? Hmm. And... Uh, and, and he is like, no, I'm not gonna give you the money because I don't want blah, 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 never mind. It wasn't, a, it, it was a verbal conflict more. And there was a peacemaker. There is always a peacemaker in the story. I also made it. a peacemaker is somebody from the side who wants to lower the tensions. And yeah. his wife was like, guys, everything's okay. He's gonna return the money. He's like, no, I'm not gonna return the money. She's like, you you earned the money when you were outside of the Serbia, blah, blah, blah. Guys, don't, don't fight, everything's okay. And she says, you have the money, right, to return them. And he says, I gambled it all. And she was a peacemaker. And at that moment that he said that sentence, I will never forget, she slapped him over his face. <laughs> like literally from the, from the, from here, like, <laughs> And she slapped him over his face and he, she jumps on him and then we start pulling him her over him over from him yeah and people always uh assume from, from the position verbal to physical from, real fast 
<laughs> real fast it went from verbal to physical but why am i telling you this because i was very 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 young when that was happening but why mm -hmm. am i telling you this because it's such a paradox that people are always assuming about other people from their position they never get in their shoes so she's telling us to calm down he's owing us money now he owes money to her <laughs> And she goes ballistic on him. She goes yeah. ballistic on him when she's in our shoes. But there is always a peacemaker. In my story, you will see that there, are, there is always a peacemaker. In there. Like, there is always somebody who doesn't understand anything, but he's trying to make peace always, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's such an interesting subject to me. Paradoxes in stories are always interesting in real life, in the books, everywhere. <laughs> so so that's, that's one of the things. The more mature you are, the more experience you have, you can easier put yourself in other person's shoes. So, yeah. Yeah, but I like that kind of uh, paradox you mentioned. You know, it's it's like a lack of empathy in a way, like the the urge to judge something based on some impulse, like an emotional impulse. You know, and yeah, yeah it's usually that lack of empathy which uh, gives away like your worst side in in many many moments. And yeah, I don't know. I For think... example, when I when I. Uh... I have so much experience now with art that I analyzed it and people who make it and so on. I literally can open a, their artwork and know what kind of people they are, what drives them inside, what kind of sense, what kind of uh, senses they have. Uh, are they sad? Are they happy? Literally, you can see that from artwork, which is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I went through all of that emotions, so I can see them now in the paintings. Yeah, you now pick because, it up instantly. Uh, you can read the signs almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can, you can, you can breathe. But it's such an interesting art is so liberating. Art is so, so liberating. Any kind of art, not just ours art. It's so liberating. It feeds soul. You're translating part of you on the piece of paper or on a vacuum tablet, doesn't matter. But you're creating something and it heals. The book healed me literally from all the problems I had in my life, from all unresolved situations I had in my life uh, that I wrote, that I drew, that I designed. I mean, I have a character in the book, I will say this openly, because I'm not going to show you, but I will say, I have a snail in the book. Character is a snail. He's my friend. We fought a lot. We fought a lot. And I always thought that he is slimy, as we like to say in Serbian. That's why I made him as a snail. But eventually I realized that I'm just perceiving it wrong. He is his uh, way of thinking. And we became really, really good friends eventually. I mean, I mean, we were good, but now we are really, really good. So all of the situations I had with him, I translated into one snail. And I think it has such a weight on the art because it didn't come from here. It came from here. That's so, 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 so important in art. Have you ever tried to do any music for your project? Have you ever imagined you that if I sing, I, you're asking me a really good question. I can't sing at all, for example, but you, I don't know how you felt this, but currently I'm making an official soundtrack of Inside 44. Wow, dude, that's so cool. Yeah, I was asking you if you've ever imagined. I'm, I'm sure you did. Yeah, I'm yeah. making also, sorry for interrupting. I'm making also, you know, when a, a series has opening video, I'm making that for Inside 44 now. That's why I made, why I'm making the soundtrack. I paid for a guy that's going to make a soundtrack. That's great, dude. How do you turn out? I don't know. I'm receiving it in the next five days. That won't be posted anywhere. But I will show you also that I have some bits of the video. So I'm making also because I want to make I want to make uh, this book to come to Hollywood. I don't know. Will it come there? That's what I want. But you can't win always in life. However, I'm walking that path. I'm walking mm -hmm. that path slowly. So why not have an introduction video and everything? So, yeah. So. Look, I, I want to ask you something. Have you ever felt like, let's say you've been planning something for a long time, right? Like your Insight 44 project, you knew a bunch of stuff. Of course, you learned through the process. You discovered more story possibilities, characters, worlds, whatever. And you have them planned like they're in your head, probably somewhere else stored safely on your computer. And you're thinking of like perfecting it a little more, you know, giving it like a little more time. And then uh, there's someone 
who comes up not necessarily with the same design or remotely similar, but maybe a, the same technique or something, you know? Oh, there's a character who has like a robot friend or something, and you, you know, and you're like, well, that's like, do you ever feel like now when I release my stuff, they're going to think that I copied that guy or something when in reality I had this going for years, you know? It was already planned. So, because it's something I don't perceive from you. Like, you don't seem to care much about what other people think about you. And that's what I love. And I would, I'm trying really hard to kind of stop overthinking and stop caring so much about what other people think, you know? When, I'm not sure what your video, like the, the what did you call it? The series opening something, right? Opening the of the series, yeah. Exactly. Um, so I already showed these two guys here an animation that I, I did, like the storyboard, you know, I already tried oh, to get oh. some sounds in there. My project is most likely going to be a book, you know, but it's not necessarily limited to the book. As I mentioned in a video that's going to be released on Eben Schumacher's YouTube uh, channel from Evenant. Uh, I recently did a podcast with him and we discussed about these things. And so it's, it, I don't know, it's going to be like other kind of content too, maybe, you know, like if you watch this three minute long animation where these characters interact this way, you will better understand this moment in the book or stuff like that. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I never did anything with that animation. I never continued it. It just rather stayed on my mind as something that I have to do one day, you know. But since I don't have a schedule for it, I didn't put it on a calendar, it's never going to happen. You know, I'm always going to have something else to do instead. So, yeah, I was just wondering if you've ever felt like, ah, oh, now everybody's going to think I copied that guy or like, I don't know, like I wanted to stream some games recently on my on my on my channel and someone started to stream the same game more modern version of the game and it made me think that ah oh, man now they're gonna see me streaming the same game but from 20 years ago and they're gonna think ah you did it because of me or something like that and no i had this plan for a few months now it's just that i couldn't play so far so do you ever have those kind of feelings of like I don't know how to describe it, like this coincidence I thing. I understand. It looks like a coincidence. Well, it's not. You had it planned well, for a long time. Uh, one thing I, I will tell you about coincidences, I will start with that to clarify some stuff. For example, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, monkeys, uh, for example, started to use wood at some period of time uh, to, to hit the things and to eat them because there was no food. And they started to do that in Asia. And there was no internet, there was nothing there. I'm talking about real monkeys, like uh, that, that uh, they couldn't get bananas, so they started to hit other food to get it with the, with the wood. They were never yeah, doing I heard that before. They were picking up like spear fishing techniques and stuff with like a, a stick, you know? Yeah. And they were, they, learned in, they, they were learning that from and local people. It's written in China books, the old, old ones that was happening not so long ago. We, we could write and it's there are even drawings of that that mm -hmm. kind of stuff one year later monkey started to do the same thing in uh, in other in other parts of the world so there is a higher conscious nobody 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 there was no internet so there was no information circling around but informations are always circling around and there is always a universe plan that something will happen so the universe always has a plans for something and it's distributing as planned about people judging me uh people judge me my whole life people judge me my whole life i'm a very rational when it comes if i see that i copied something that i copied i will immediately take it and throw it in the garbage can because what i mean by that if i really copied something then it shouldn't be out there but if i unconscious unconsciously did something i will keep it there there is a lot of Dharma DNA that nobody maybe will not see it. Uh, about people judging, that's, that's, that's the main thing, people judging you, people talking about this, talking about that, talking about this. 
uh, people judge all the time. I remember there was even a, I was giving a lecture in Belgrade. A guy approached me to ask me why am I reading scripts from my hand? He thought that I was reading a script from my hand, uh, like like this, that I, that I was, and I asked him, what do you mean? He says, Serbians can be very direct. He says, I, I, I knew that you're hiding something. Show me your hand. That I'm hiding on my hand and writing all the, all the things. And I just do this and I do this. But in short, in short, uh, I didn't want to show what I really showed. But the point is, uh, they will judge you for many things. I don't know why people judge so much. We are all judgmental. Not, not that I'm not an angel. But people judge all the time for some insecurities that they have inside of them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like a projection, a lot of time projecting. Ins- it's what you see in other people. It's what you yeah. what you have inside of you, and you see it in other people. For example, it took me a long time to understand that I can have greed in myself because greed is bad, and then you you suppress it, you don't feel it, but you have to have it. Greed is part of a human emotion, and everything that you hate about some other person or your partner is what you hate in yourself. That's very strange, but it is like that. When you get on a spiritual path, you start to understand. Many of those things you're like, hell no, hell no, I'm not like that. But it can appear in a different manner. So people judging you, I say to people, as long as you're clean, not hurting anybody, let them all judge. Let them all judge. And you shouldn't be afraid what people will say, because there is always somebody that has to hate you. It's just like that. It's it's part of the world. It's part of the universe. It's part of the nature. You have to have an enemy. It's just the way it is. Uh, if you had only friends that tap you on the back and tell you all, all is good, hmm. you would never progress, Adrian. That's my experience. You would never progress. Some of my best frenemies helped me achieve the most amazing things in my life. For example, one thing that you don't know about my personal style, and I will say it now and you will probably laugh, but you know, if you remember when I started my career, my trademark was was my hair. There was always jokes about my hair that it has life for itself. Uh, I remember those days. (laughs) My friends, when I grew up, now it's part of me, right? When I I was growing up, my friends hated my hairstyle. They would uh, literally want to pay for a hairdresser to cut my hair. It was immature for them. It stunk. Uh, it's stupid. It's so on. And I didn't have, now I have a bit shorter hair, but it was longer. And because of them, 2015, I let it grow. I let it grow. And trust me, I was sick. Plus I had hair that they didn't like. When they would see me on the street, they would give me a really hard time. And it wasn't the moment because I was depressed and everything. But guess what? One of the funniest things about me is my hair. And people always make jokes about it. And it's now part of Dharma brand. So I wanted to grow it. It's not, they, they can try to cut it off and to tell me this and to tell me that. But I like this hair. I really like it. I love my hair. I hope I won't go bald. I'm over 30. So I hope I won't go over or bald like my father did. But I love it. Not everybody can like it. My friends hate it. They hate it. They would always like cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. So yeah, it's it's, it's just you have to have enemies. Mm -hmm. Well, that was greatly relieving to hear, to be honest. Um, Yeah, yeah, like you can you can lie to people, but you can't lie to yourself. Right. So as long as you know what Mm -hmm. you're doing and as long as you're aware of your truth, you shouldn't be worried about the external, you know, validation kind of thing. So, yeah. I like was... how Andrew's face is getting really, what the hell is this guy talking about? His face is literally. <laughs> You're muted, bro. We can't hear Andrew you. Andrew always has a space. He's muted himself. Like... He's talking oh, with well. himself from all the, all the stupidity. Yeah, I was talking to myself like for the past hour. <laughs> no, um, your face on my screen is like, a little bit lower so it looks like i'm closing my eyes but that's not the case um <laughs> yeah i'm thinking about like how all of this returns to that idea of like 
knowing and trusting in yourself and how it seems like it's a repeat you know like all experiences they're teaching you at least like on your life they're teaching you to kind of gain confidence in who you are and how to trust your own opinions and yeah. that doesn't mean that other people didn't help you you know it's more like through those experiences and learning from other people that like okay how can i be true to myself and to what i believe in and then it seems like it all culminated into inside 44 you know which is uh funny because like adrian is here and he like overthinks a lot of things and he's asking like for to another person's opinion on how to like stop overthinking and do it and like not care about each other opinion it's but, actually like, super hey, easy right look Stop, let that's me it. ask Do it. let's let me ask someone else how to like not care about other people's opinion when like you're asking for an opinion about that you know like that's a bit of a uh, that's paradox that's paradox that you, don't hear. you know yeah. and um yeah it's like another paradox that happens and even though like we all have the th this personal project thing seems more like a tool for us to discover who we, we are than like a an actual product or something like that turns out that it, it's something that is like um people can identify with so it becomes something greater but even if it wasn't published or if it wasn't um a product product for you to sell the whole idea of like heaven Urion or inside 44 or like blue november and all of those projects it seems to me that even if it's just for yourself, like it's worth a lot doing something like that because it's a tool for you to discover yourself. Like the, the learning new things part, it's, it's fine too, but I think it's more like a meditation would be, you know, like a therapy. It's a, it's something that is deep within you and the idea that you need to express it. Like, I don't know if that's how you felt about inside of 44. If you, if it was like something that you needed to do or just wanted and then turns out that it helped you out on on yeah, it's like your healing, life but right like he said yeah uh, because he, he said like uh you said Dharma, like it's healing it, it was healing through the book right but it's funny how that not even if you don't need healing something like that can help you you know like mm -hmm. find out your demons and what scares you and where yeah. it should go yeah. we we Modern psychology has literally fucked up a lot of a lot of social beings today. Eight million, eight billion people. Uh, modern psychology has tried to simplify everything as much as possible, which doesn't work. And I, I am strongly against modern psychology after everything I went through. Trust me, I read three hundred books of modern psychology so I can testify to it. And we are trying to in, uh, over to become over intellectual, as I said. Uh, even people that are in love, they are not in love. They are intellectually in love with something. So, so it's 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 when you are intellectually in love with something that has to have a clear uh, direction where we are heading. Becoming famous with Inside 44, being a superstar, being a rock star, and we are not healing ourselves, but we are putting more burdens on our shoulders. Where we are intellectually thinking, where will this take me? Uh, I have no idea where Inside will take me. I had idea where I wanted to go. Will it go there? I had no idea. It still stands on the shelf one and a, one year and eight months later. Unfortunately, it's not published. Do I care? No. I love that project, but I know that all situations and all people work for me, as Dushica would say. And uh, if it was meant to be, it would be. It would. It would. It would happen. How did I do in set forty four? Very simple. Uh, this is another part of my story and my life that people should know. I, I, I talked about this, but I never talked uh, completely. Uh, when I was 13 years old, 99, <clears throat> uh, Serbia was bombed uh, because of the war and everything we had bombing. And uh, while we were bombed, uh, news, new, news people, I remember we had cables so I, we could see outside of the Serbia what's happening. Uh, Serbians were presented as war criminals, mafia, rapists. Uh, slaughters, and I don't know what. Political propaganda, as it, as it always goes in any kind of war. We were presented as evil guys. Mm -hmm. uh, in that bombing, in 99, 
building exploded next to my building 600 meters away. And I was awake and I saw when that happened. In the next nine months, I would develop a disease called diabetes type 1. I would be, get on insulin and I would start getting insulin after that. Why am I telling you all of this and uh, why is it such an interesting story? Because when I spent for first time, I was 13 years old, all of a sudden I need to go on injections. Life from a sportsman goes down. It's not, I had a crash in 2015, but this was my first crash in my life. We all have them throughout the life. Why am I telling you all of this? Uh, when I went to Italy, uh, we, I was presented as somebody really bad because of the political propaganda that we are like this, we are like that. I was already presented as something bad. And a lot of times, uh, you, you, this will be such an interesting for you to hear when uh, black people come here, they always say, we think, we feel that only Serbians can sympathize with us how much rejected we are. Because that was propaganda against us for last 20 years. Why am I telling you a story about Inside 44? What happened uh, when I was in hospital, I needed a hero. I didn't have anybody. I was very lonely, very scared as a boy. And I wanted to make a superhero back then. We are talking now about not giving a fuck also. It all interlaps in this story and I think it's going to be very interesting. And I hate it. I hate it from the bottom of my heart that I'm presented as a bad guy to everybody because I'm Serbian. So when a 2015 happened and all went south and uh, there was a lot of chaos, I started to, to sit down with myself. I had plenty of time to sit down with myself, too much to be honest. And instead of watching porn and like other people kill themselves, I was thinking a lot and feeling myself inside, what, what am I feeling? And I remembered I wanted two things. One thing is that uh, I wanted to create a hero when I was 13 years old, so now I'm a bit older. I will be the hero of the book. When I published how the hero looks, he has my face, if you forgot, he has my face, he's in armor. Many people sent me, told me that I'm the most egoistic bastard that exists, <laughs> but I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care because it was from my heart. Hmm. Uh, second thing, I know that many of them will feel bad now when they hear this story, but it's not about them, it's about me. And the uh, second thing that I hated in my life was that I'm rejected as a Serbian all the time, my passport, my this, my that. I wanted the book where Serbians are good guys. Maybe it's in science fiction, but there is a planet called Bersia, uh, uh, sorry, part of the planet called Bersia, you can very easily connect it, that it's Serbia Bersia, there is Darko Markovic that gets diabetes, the main character has diabetes in the book, there is a reason why he has, and I will overlap one more thing that's very important, when you are Serbian you are cut off the world with many things that other people can't sense, for example, I wear a sensor on my arm that measures blood sugar all the time. In the rest of the world, in USA, everybody gets it for free. The government gives them um, in Japan, in, in USA and so on. And it's very cheap. In Serbia, I, I get it. Uh, I need to get it through illegal routes because it's illegal to have it here. So that's one of more things that uh, made me angry. So the main character it's, has his sorry, armor that gives him insulin. And it's so illegal on. to have it? That, can, yeah, we can not have that kind of... So you you're, don't tell anyone. So you have to hide no, it all the time. I get it. I get it through illegal routes. I get it through illegal routes. They can get it on my hand. Once it's inside of Serbia, I have it. But you, oh, okay. you understand how messed, yes. how yeah. messed up situation is that everybody in the world can have it, and I can't have it because I'm Serbian. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the book to present that Bursians from White City, because Belgrade means White City when you translate it into Serbian. Darko Markovic from Bursia, White City, is not a bad guy. He is not a bad guy. He has his problems, like other parts of the world. But just because of political propaganda doesn't mean he's bad. Yeah, do some justice to your people, right? Portray them as yeah. you know them, not as yeah, yeah. they want them to be seen. Right? When I was doing that and uh, uh, speaking about spiritual stuff, 
I always say spiritual, even though it's not spiritual, but that's a fancy word for modern psychology. Spiritual, mm -hmm. I feel it, I sense it, so I have to speak in that manner so everybody can understand me. Uh, uh, when I was thinking to put myself as a, as a main character, what will people think? It is egoistic, to be honest. Come on, my face on the main character, it is. And, uh, and uh, I was thinking and I remember I got a book from my friend and he said, read it. He, he didn't give it to because of that, he just gave it to me and I was reading it. It was from George R. R. Martin, uh, the, the Knight of Seven Kingdoms. I don't know if any of you read it. It uh, happened no. 60 years before the, the Game of Thrones. I don't know if you read it maybe or you know about it. I know it about it, I haven't years. read it. Yeah, I know about it, but I haven't read it. So, uh, it happens after the war of Black Fires and Targaryens. A king decided to make them all legal. To the, all of them can have a throne, bastards, which are back Blackfires, and the real Targaryens. And whole book, he's luring you, where you are just reading it. I'm not spoiling anything, but he's luring you the whole book. This is like six pages of the book. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's super interesting. Mm -hmm. And he's luring you, and you're reading how Blackfires and Targaryens fought. And in your mind, you're making a story. Oh my God, why the hell are Blackfires trying to take the throne? It belongs to Targaryens. They are the real ones. Because you're forming an opinion in my your head, which is complete nonsense. And you're like, why the hell? So they lost, the Blackfires lost. And whole book, you are like, oh my God, these guys are stupid. Who would follow them? Who would this? These are the real Targaryens. I will follow the real Targaryen and so on and so on. I'm talking this emotional because I felt it really. And I got annoyed at myself when that happened. And then there is one chapter, only one chapter and a couple of sentences that made me decide make myself as the main character because I had questions in myself who will trust the Serbian we are nobody that's what also they were serving to me you are this you're that and this is how the chapter goes they meet an old guy that fought in that war he's 80 years old and he fought for Blackfires he lost everything and the knight asks him why did you fight for them they are nobody and he looks at him and he says you know I knew the Targaryens have the throne and everything. But I was a good friend with the Targaryen king at that moment. A prince. He was very obese. He couldn't walk how obese he was. He would uh, sleep with all the hookers. He would drink wine. He was very unwise. He was everything that the knight shouldn't be. But on the other side where the Damien came, which is a black fire, and by law he shouldn't have a throne. He was nobody. But when I saw him, he was tall, elegant, knew how to fight with the sword, had only one wife, had justice in him, and has, was very loyal to the country and to the well-being of the country. How could I fight for a Targaryen when everything is wrong about him? After that moment, when I read that, I was like, just because somebody said I'm bad and I'm this and I'm that, that doesn't mean I'm that. I have the mirror, I can see myself in the mirror. So it was liberating, literally. And that's when I decided to put myself in the book as main character. So, yeah. That's powerful, man. Like, Thank yeah, you. Don't, don't, <laughs> let, <I> love <laughs> don't let other people's opinions kind of um, distort your perception of yourself. But you understand they're illusions. They're illusions. Yes, that's as what I, I mean. Smoke somebody and mirrors. Because I always thought that somebody outside of Serbia is more welcome than me. Yeah. That's not true. That's not true. And that's just an illusion that I had in my head, like many people do. Crazy. Dude, I can't help it but to keep thinking of the, um, about the copyright stuff you mentioned earlier. You know, like that must be like an entire adventure in itself right everything and, and is that, an adventure but that's <laughs> but that's recent the copyright that's the thing last six five months five months uh i copyrighted it uh i don't like lawyers anymore after that because they charge you everything when they say everything well, even their I, mistakes they charge yeah when i saw you posting about it i was like yo this guy is really talking about this so i i felt the need to kind of ask you like 
how do you copyright things like how many things how many copyright things and you started to say like oh yeah one for the world one for the character <laughs> one copyright for the you know it's like so many things i thought it was like no just copyright inside 44 but it yeah, turns can, out you, it's you not that simple you can only copyright in 44 i wanted that route it's quite pricey i can tell you it's quite quite pricey you can buy a car for that much money how much i paid for everything so i you assume can copyright that only I, I assume that would include everything right yeah uh, from the uh, name you copyright, you... to the the design of the characters the, the name you can the name the name is a trademark so you need to do a trademark that's a story for itself so i also did that but copyright is copyright you can copyright what's in the book and so on if you just copyright the book it doesn't cover everything why because uh, i went the route where i copyright every single element beside the, the, the whole book by that i mean uh, machinery uh, characters their categories ca characters backstories and so on so if tomorrow somebody steals one of the designs by having this much copyright you can easily sue them you can easily mm -hmm. sue them and what is good for me, somebody stole two of my designs. Really? And I will show you that later so we can we can talk about that. Uh, there are two designs that were literally copied. It's very obvious. And will I sue them? I don't think I will sue them, but we will negotiate what we will do because it's very obvious that it was taken from there. Mm -hmm. And I will just say shame on you artists that did that. We follow each other on Instagram and Facebook. You took my whole design and redrew it. Shame on you. And I will show you that so we can we can talk about that uh, that later. But I always remember about copying Armani's quote. If somebody's copying it, it means I'm doing a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to so, say yeah. it, but is it like a big project or or some individual kind of stuff? I imagine, I assume big, it's something big, big right? Big, big, okay. big. Okay. If they copy it as a personal work, you can't blame them. I mean, it's they are testing, learning how to draw and so on. Mm. I don't care about that. They can do whatever like they want. But if it's an IP and millions go in it, yeah, then but it's, it's not it's, okay. It's insane to think that that thing, that, that, that it works like that. You know, in a way, like, look, my friend Dan Luvisi, who is someone I, I hope we can get on the show soon. He also narrates all this story about how he struggled with his book, with LMS, you know, through Hollywood and to, you know, navigate this ocean of sharks, you know, business guys all the way. And he was, uh, I remember he was telling us about this. Uh, you know, he would get messages from people working at some big companies. Like, they knew that those references are from his book, from his story. So he would basically, they would basically tell him, dude, literally the guy walks into the office and says, I want it like this. And that's your character. And I was like, but that's Dan's character. That's from another project. And he's like, I don't care. I want it like this. You know, same same design, same any, anything. And that's that's how it is. It's, it's pretty crazy that they push you as an artist to kind of do it that way when you know it's wrong. You know, it's like you're we're basically stealing, bro. Yeah, I don't I don't don't bother. Like, don't don't care. Um, don't worry about it. Like our lawyer is going to take care of the rest of the process if they sue yeah. us or whatever. It's unfortunate. Business is business. Yeah. Unfortunately, lawyers are lawyers. You need. But to it's like there's, them. there's no honor <laughs> in that, right? There's no honor, and I'm not gonna fight like that. I'm gonna turn my back and leave. Mm. Uh, for me, fighting without honor is something very disgusting. There are many people like me, but there are also many people that are there to 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 do anything to to screw you over. Mm -hmm. It's it's part of life. It's part of life. Dan Luizzi is amazing, uh, really inspiring story. Uh, I, a big shout out to him because I started doing a book because of him. And I met him in Croatia and he asked me, why don't I do a book? Don't forget that I only did cars back then. And he asked me, why don't I do a book? And that's how Inside 44 became what it became. And I am very grateful to him, even though we don't know each other, we met only two times in our life. Uh, his story is very inspirational mesmerizing especially now when i did my work and when i know what he went through 
it gives it even more emotion and, and quality to it and everything and i'm like well done well done literally like after everything because he also published it so big shout out to him really big shout out to him i have huge respect for dan lovizi and uh, i hope that that lms will eventually get to hollywood i really hope and uh, very brave man all i can say very very brave man to get in a in a in a cage with sharks very brave man so yeah yeah i don't know like if you could not summarize but if you could think of a couple of things you've you've learned across this whole journey so far right through all your experiences all these adversities that you had to um, I like I like that that Mulan quote that you mentioned earlier. I had it in a different way, you know, like uh, a calm sea doesn't make good sailors. Or yeah, there's yeah, yeah. there's there's many similar ones, you know. But I like that one um, because it, it's true. Like if you run always, like you know David Goggins, right? So he did this analogy of like a like a smooth highway which is always nice. Yeah. There's always gas stations every few kilometers for you to stop, to be super comfortable. But that doesn't, I mean, you don't learn much from that. So imagine going through the struggle of having the, how would you say this, like the unpredicted things that could happen, you know, in a, in a journey that is like, yeah, like, uncharted areas that nobody has stepped in before and you have no reference you have no guide you have no in a way that's the most rewarding thing because you're the one carving that path but at the same time yes it's scary and you know what i've heard that if you want to do something and you're both scared and excited to still do it it means that's your call Like, that's for you. Do it, you know? And I was wondering, like, what would you think of right now as a few things you've you've learned from all this story? Uh, when you said the, the highway that has everything and it's going forward, uh, I, I think immediately of my father. <laughs> My father gave me many lessons in my life. He's still alive and everything. And he, he he's really extraordinary person. And uh, the first thing that fell on my mind was when uh, uh, I was supposed to go to Croatia first time from Serbia. And uh, the road from Croatia, from Belgrade to Zagreb is 400 kilometers. And he would say, you know, it's very unsafe road. And I would say, what the hell are you talking about, man? It's a flat road, straightforward. You just drive, literally. Mm -hmm. Turns out he was right. Because when you only drive forward, you very easily become distracted because you get tired. Everything's the same. And you slip off the street and most people die there. So if you don't have turning points, you will fall down. It's same in life when you have too much money from that you didn't make yourself uh, you will eventually probably start using it to something like a cocaine or something like that because too much power too much responsibility i know it's a spider-man quote but it's really true with the with the too much power gets comes really big responsibility uh what i learned from my career from uh, inside 44 book from my experiences with festivals from uh, many things is that you first thing you need to listen i mean by listening with the heart not by head i mean listening with the heart many people will give you give you a lot of information but only certain information are true uh, many people there are some people that will like you to fail that's good because you're in the right direction life is testing you uh, I also think that it's your responsibility to take care of everybody who is around you while you are working on your project or on a project that you are in. I think that's very beneficial. 
third thing that I learned from all of this is that no matter how shitty the situation looks like, there is something in it. There is something in it. And with that, I also mean don't expect anything from anyone. You wouldn't believe how many times people surprised me with nice gestures when I didn't expect anything three or four years later. One of them, uh, NFT, when all the craze started. This is very important story that they tell you. When the NFT craze started, foundation, everybody wanted on foundation. This was when? Last year? 2021. Last year, you know, remember everybody was trying to get on a foundation. You needed an invite. Yeah, the thing I don't is, have any. I, sorry to interrupt you. I, I just started uh, mid-2020, I think it was. A friend of mine just told me, yo, dude, this, there's this new thing that, well, it's not new, but, you know, I've been testing it for a while and I wanted to make sure it works. So it's not a scam and stuff. That was NFT stuff. And I opened an account and I tried it. And I saw nobody else, nobody else, literally nobody else. The first one I saw openly mentioning anything about it was Ben Morrow. Yeah. And Ben Morrow with the super rare account, which is something that I also tried to get. Um, I was like, oh, so, th okay, so this guy is also into this. And then, as you say, all of a sudden, this avalanche of bigger artists kind of making more noise and all of a sudden all the little artists also like trying to get into it that was a, a <laughs> like you said everybody was asking for for an invitation right yeah. um what, what was the name um foundation right foundation, foundation app yeah but you remember so, that uh, it literally started a civil war between artists literally there was a war you yeah. remember that because many it's artists wrong. started to because other it, artists yeah, everybody yeah. had like a different stand. Why not invite it? Why you you either you love it or you hate it, you know, yeah. like you can't stand in the middle. I, I remember when I was reading Facebook posts, I was like, well, we finally know who is who. We finally know who is who in mm -hmm. this industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When when uh, NFT started to happen, I got the invite from Art Station. I don't know if you know that Art Station was supposed to have NFT, like Foundation. I didn't know that. And, and yeah, yeah. They you know, cancel the plans, right? This is very yeah. important. This is very okay. important. So, so, so people know this, and you know that I want their challenge. So I should get many things from them, right? It was also great commercial for them. But then, on the other hand, why would I get anything? I got to win the challenge, and other people were asking me, "Are you getting anything from our station?" I was like, "Guys, they are the coolest guys ever. They gave me the our station winning. Why am I saying that?" So eventually I never, I, some people ask me, why are you not asking them anything? What should I ask them? Like, who am I to ask, to be honest? That was my question always. Five years later, they invite me for NFT. And I'm like, damn, I'm going with NFT and everything we talk. And it was canceled because low grade artists decided, really low grade artists to make a rebel where just to downvote the project to download and we can't yeah. get it and eventually i was on a blacklist of artists because i was invited by art station i was again getting some messages and i was like uh, i don't give a damn to be honest like disgusting I don't give a damn. i'm unfollowing you it, right now <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you're disgusting i'm unfollowing you and yeah. then but my question for everybody who says that Crazy. to me ever i just write them what is the real reason I never get an answer. I never get an answer. Nobody knows to give you the answer. That's that's the trick. <laughs> this trick. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows to give the answer. That's a good question. I'm, I'm for, you are such a horrible person. I dislike you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me, madam, madam, sir, can you tell me what is the real answer why you're following me? Because you're bad. Please, madam, sir, can you tell me what is the real answer? Nobody answer to me. Fine, yeah. fine. Because people get so emotional, they don't know what they are doing. They don't know their, what they are doing. When you get a bit higher on the artist level and uh, have podcasts and stuff like that, that starts to happen. So then foundation starts and everybody's fighting on internet. I will never forget to Jesus Christ, what kind of messages I read between people. <laughs> Who are you to have an uh, invite? I don't know, this guy's writing on this guy's wall. Why are you having it? Why not me? You are all disgusting for having it. And so many paradoxes flying around because all of a sudden when that artist which is writing that NFT is bad gets the invite all of a sudden NFT is great all of a yeah. sudden NFT is the best project ever 
and and it was it was such a delusional time literally i call mm -hmm. i i call it how, how did they call it the night the night when the night when design died i called it like that between my friends the night when design died mm -hmm. and uh, uh i got my invite by accident i posted there was nobody was sending me there was no just nobody had it it was such a it's a such a rush nobody had it and it reminded me of serbia <laughs> Because when there was bombing, there were some times when we didn't have bread and stuff like that. There was not enough bread for everybody. It's not that we would starve, but it was a problem, you know, shut down and so on. And I said to myself, what is meant to be, will be. What is not meant to be, will not be. You can't blame anybody for that. It's the circumstances. And then a guy sends me out of nowhere, out of nowhere, I swear, guys, out of nowhere. I know him, I follow him. He's, I'm not going to mention his name. I sent him a toy from Inside 44. He has a number one toy from Inside 44 because of that. And uh, he sends me a message and says, <laughs> says, Dark, listen, when I was starting out, I was sending messages to everybody who was a bit famous as an artist. And I sent message to you and you were the only guy that uh, responded to me and you answered and so on. And I said, yeah, yeah, of course I remember. By the way, I have photogenic memory. Mostly I remember everything that happened, like literally. As we like to say, remember as an elephant. You know that elephants yeah. can remember all the bad things. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he says, because you were so nice to me, do you still need a code for foundation? And for me, guys, there is no money that can make you that kind of winning, winning sense that you have in you. You did a good thing without asking for anything in return and it returned like that i was like literally i felt warm around my heart i felt so good about myself and it was such and it reminded me because i was in such a struggle with money at that point i started to earn good but it was so stressful i started to realize it's not all about the money it's not all about the money so i, I always had angels that protected me he was one of the angels that protected me and told me it's not all about the money relax relax so yeah and uh, <laughs> it's 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 very important really to take care of people around you it's really really important no matter how the situation looks stupid and i really mean it's stupid literally stupid that's the right word so yeah it makes me think about how many people are uh, really confused in a way like for instance understanding that you know you have to give to be to receive something right um there's many people who take it the the wrong way and they understand that if if i help you dharmar then i expect you to give me in return right and i focus on that only and this is like like those horse things you know they put like here like i'm only giving my attention to this and if for whatever reason you don't give me back, right? Then I'm going to think that you owe me stuff, you know, because I helped you in the past. Now you help me too, right? Well, you, let's say you don't for whatever reason, whatever circumstance, right? It's not your fault. You can't. You simply can't help me. And in the meantime, I'm just refusing. I'm closing every other door from any other direction where there's tons of other streams of help trying to reach me. Which is what you say, you know, like uh, when you give without expecting anything in return, that's when stuff starts pouring in and you have to stay uh, open, right? There's there's going to be so humble. many humble. humble, yes, like so many other opportunities trying to show up in your way. And if you're still, uh, what's the word, dude, like blinded in a way you know by the fact that no it's it has to be you i helped you and you have to help me back you know that doesn't work like that the universe doesn't work like that like i'm sure you see you know like um by the way you talk about destiny and all that stuff which i like a lot and i would like to get more into that in a second um like when you align yourself with the rest of things right when you start to think positively and more optimistic and more you seem to attract all those things because you're using that same kind of energy that same kind of frequency vibration whatever you want to call it you know 
And same applies to the exact opposite in a way. Like if you're constantly thinking you're never going to make it, you're always failing, you're always like, that's the way I I see it, you know, like... It's a victim mentality. It's a victim mentality when you're thinking all the time like that. It's a victim. You fall in a victim and many people like to be victims. It's easier way. Because you Same get when, when you get pitied, kid. you get help, you yeah, get yeah, like other course. people. There is always help. There is always somebody to tap you. No, you are mm. good. We like Some, you. Someone else so is someone else is gonna save you. You know, so yeah, you don't have to do anything. Uh, uh, it's not about feeling that you are. If you force feelings, it will not lead to a good thing. So you just need to understand to open yourself to everything that will happen. There will be some shitty situations, there will be some really good situations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, uh, I'm not so, saying you have to close your eyes to those bad things. You know, you, ha- you must accept no, 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 the I'm fact. Saying, uh, yeah. You, when you open yourself, then you understand that life has peaks and valleys. Yeah. And you don't close the doors by forcing something. This is the job I want. This is this. It's not time. It's not time. That happened to me with car design. I want to be a car designer. I want to be a car designer. I'm a really good car designer. Nobody wants me as a car designer. Why the freaking passport is not doing my me work? Why I can't get mm-hmm. a job because I'm a third world citizen? This is the job for me. I want a Ferrari. I want this. Guys, I never wanted to be a car designer. I'm openly now saying this. I started that route and I never understood that I don't want to be a car designer. Stupid Darko thought that car design is everything. Now I'm designing spaceships and everything else that I should design. But that Darko was car design. Car design? car design and life is literally darko snap out of it it's not for you go in a different direction no car design car design so so it's it's egoistic it's very egoistic it's those subtle things that we don't understand about ourselves we all live and learn unfortunately yeah but that's the unfortunately sorry that's the darko you were back then that was that stage in your life you know that was absolutely what that darko thought about yeah, the same way that was what that Adrian thought about in the, at the very beginning of his career where, you know, he thought he was going to improve so much that he would go, he would land jobs at giant companies and live in other places a couple of years here, a couple of years there, you know, moving continents and stuff. And then you realize that's not what you wanted to do. You know, all of a sudden you have that spark and your world changes in a way you know like i really resonate with what you said because it's it's the same thing i i started to kind of force as well like i need to have my own project i i everybody else is doing a project and i tried and i failed it didn't happen it, it's like it's it doesn't come out guess what one day like it just starts to manifest slowly yeah. And you walk yeah. into that moment, that spark, you know, which could be a moment, could be something that develops over time, but it happens. We all get there, you know? So by no means, you don't have to force yourself to be positive, stay positive. It doesn't matter. Everything's burning, you know, like stay positive. Everything's going to be okay. No, like acknowledge the world is a shitty place right now. Okay. When that's a good place to start you know at least you acknowledge it you accept your reality but that doesn't mean that you can't change it you know that's where you can start working on it whereas if you just keep thinking you know the delusional way of like nah, everything's fine <laughs> you know, remember the dog the meme yeah. with the dog in the um yeah i i would say uh, that's i don't know <laughs> huge huge inspiration to me and my career and most of the business things that I learned, I learned from women. And I always say that from interaction with them, from talking with them, from everything, from women are the huge inspiration with emotions and stuff like that. And you can learn really a lot about work. I'm not talking about women in work environment. I'm talking in communication, in clubs, in cafes, in bars. And there you can learn about that kind of attraction and stuff like that because heterosexual men approach women for example and you everybody there is a girl that you like and you become when you're younger you become so delusional when you see that she's not for you 
but emotions are at play and you become so delusional with her that she's perfect that she's the best thing that you can get in your life that and that's the, it's the same with when you get in those, those emotions oh my god my life stinks i will never get a job it's not working out it's mm -hmm. not it's the same emotional feeling and when you get in that state it's literally like they sense it it's literally like they sense it and they start to push you around they start to push you around it's such an interesting concept because they literally sense it. it's same with life it's same with life you sometimes you need to move away to understand yourself better and uh, why, why did I say that? I don't know. I'm not very smart. It's, it has been two hours of talk, so I'm starting to lose my, <laughs> my, 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 my line of thought. I apologize. I, I think I you thought, were trying to I kind of... this will never happen. It, it's I like an, this will never happen. Yeah, it, it's like an analogy, I guess, right? Like, yeah, you, some you sort learn of analogy from, about like energy that you give and then you get You back learn from, and from like, your, your interactions with girls and stuff. You yeah, learn the way law they... Attraction law attraction yeah. exists, really. I uh -huh. know how many things I wrote on the paper, but the problem is that we oversimplified it. Modern psychology has oversimplified it. Just imagine it and it will happen. It's not like that because for it to happen, you need to clear this space here. And that's some serious work. That's some super, super serious work because all the fears that are inside, all the patterns that learned, trust me, if I told you what kind of things I went through when I was cleaning that space, I don't wish it to anybody, to be honest, even though it's for their for their best, but it's such a painful process because you go through everywhere. I I I I wish that modern psychology didn't simplify it so much, but law of attraction definitely exists. The problem is finding out what you want and cleaning the space. And that's hard as hell. That's hard as hell. It really is. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure how much, how long do you have still? Yeah, uh, since really... we just got called out on it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we can, we can, we can, no, 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 sorry. I apologize if it sounded like that. We can for 20 more minutes than I need to go, but 20 more minutes works for me. Sure, it works sure. For me. Yeah, maybe like a closing kind of thought, you know, like the destiny thing you mentioned so many times. Yeah. How did you come across that thought like that realization about what destiny means to you like how do you see it it's such an interesting concept that i have a, a pretty strong opinion like very personal but it's like almost like it grew strong roots in me and i was discussing this with a friend the other day and i was wondering about your take on it because I've heard you mention it a couple of times, like, yeah, that's destiny, that's destiny. And I love it, by the way. I will just tell you, I will, I will just tell you this. When I was going with Dushitsa, uh, she's, her name is Dr. Soul in the book. When I was going to her teachings, one moment she got so pissed with me, she was like, stop simplifying everything. This is not a modern psychology, Darko. It's much complicated more than that. And I, then I said, no, but it's my destiny to do that. And she says, do you even know what the destiny is? And I was like, yes, it's what I need to do. And she says, shut up, just shut up. And, and I'm like, nobody likes to, for anybody to tell him to shut up. But I was like, okay, what is destiny, doctor? And she looks at me and she says, Darko, destiny are the habits that we do daily. Or... The things that you do daily is what determines your future. If you change some of those habits, your future will change. But then again, we come back to the same thing. What do you want in life? What do you want in life? And it shook me so much because everybody today is talking about energy, especially women. I'm sorry, women, for, for putting you up front, but you, you, you push it the most, you know, they, they like to do that the most. We have energy between us. It's such... You know what energy is? That was one more lesson where we said, she set me down. She was like, shut up, shut up. Do you know what energy is? Now I will ask you guys, does anybody of you know what energy is? Because I had no clue. I had no clue. What is energy? But I was pretending that I know. I yeah. was pretending that I'm the smartest one, that I'm, I will track with my positive energy, everything. So I'm asking you guys, do you know, do you know what is energy? Because I'm still very stupid, honestly, but 
at least you guys are not talking about energy now like I am talking about, so, so you can cover yourself and I can't cover myself. What is energy for you? For me, energy is like... Uh, it's like something you can feel in a way. Like a field of... Yeah, like... I, I, I'm just going back to this Nikola Tesla quote, like if you, or, or wasn't Our he? favorite Serbian. Yeah, may, maybe, yeah. So, you know, that energy of uh, vibrations and frequencies yeah. are like the tr perfect triangle of how things used to work and stuff. Then there's like uh, the, the mag magnetism and electricity yeah. and it's like, these basic things, what <laughs> I'm not even sure how to express all of this. Like the world works in a way, right? And yeah. these are just ways for us to kind of read it in a way, like to understand it from uh, the atom molecular level to like more complex systems and organisms and all that stuff. But it it all boils down to those three ingredients that I mentioned yeah. and but if you ask me like okay but what is energy I don't think I really know how to answer that question I would very easily say we are energy like you are yeah. I am energy you know we are, we are. yeah but yeah that's so what that's... about you you're awfully quiet you're awfully quiet today I would like to hear your your <laughs> voice a little bit if it's possible um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of energy we're talking about, like relationship energy or like energy in social settings where we're talking to other people. Um, yeah, I agree with Adrian. It's kind of like a vibrational thing where you're, um, you just like feel the person's expressions, like how they're talking to yeah. you, you know? And I like that. I like that. It's like what you see in their face or body language, you know? Um, yeah. You kind of synthesize that in your own mind or heart. You try to like, yeah, empathize with them and step into their shoes. Yeah. Which I know I'm still working on like <clears throat> empathizing with a lot of people. I, I feel like I'm naturally empathetic at some points. Um, but sometimes you can't always assume what other people are thinking, um, just because, you know, some other person might have a thought that you think, but they don't have what you think they have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely but, understand yeah. you. <laughs> it's, um, it's very true. It's very true. Yeah. It's, I don't know you see the truth in emotions, you know, in, in relationships, you see most, I know yeah. what you think. I know what you think. No, you don't. No, you don't. Ask me. So, so this happens all the time on both yeah. sides. It creates a lot of conflict, I feel. Um, yeah, unfortunately. But... Because uh, most yeah. relationships are not sincere. Andre, do you want to also give me your determination of, of what mm. is energy? It's weird because it's hard for me to talk about like um, it's something that you feel or something that like you perceive or vibrations yeah. and that kind of stuff. So it's a different it language. More like, yeah, it's a different language. So yeah. it's, I would say that it's like, it's two folded in a sense. There is the energy that you give and what you take, and both yeah. uh, are not necessarily like. Basically, let's say that the energy that I give is a sum of like what my actions cause in the world, and actions can be like conscious and unconscious actions, but whatever it is, like, the combination of those. And how it affects people around me i would say that that's the energy so as far as i can i try to make my conscious actions have a positive impact on other people's yeah. and then there's a a big gap like dom was saying between what other people let's say transmit or emit or whatever it is the word that you want to say like what comes out from other people and what you get uh, imagine as if you had like a a filter Right, that would filter the lights that passes through it. If your the way that you receive energy 
makes only certain yeah vibration is a, a good word like to to show the the thought process but like imagine that you only accept certain vibrations right yeah. then your the energy that comes inside of like you is it can be like you, you can also control that by the way that you you can be picking kind of, like, about like to receive stuff <laughs> yeah because when people say um like they're oh i feel this negative energy how much of that negative energy that you're feeling is you perceiving things in a negative way and how yep. much is it them actually transmitting it negatively because um if you if you can like you can twist anything in a positive way and you can twist anything in a bad way like you were saying like we have uh bad moments in life and you have good moments in life that quote that you just mentioned about like um everyone's working for me like i think that's a very good way to turn any kind of action that other people do into a positive thing yeah so no matter what energy comes out of them it will turn into a positive when it comes like into your space basically yeah. so i would say that energy is that subtle communication like caused by people's actions either conscious and unconscious and you can't control what what's outside you know only how you react to things that happen yeah, we, and that doesn't mean like uh, it's perfect, right? No, yeah, but nothing is perfect. I think in this yeah. world, I think that everything is very imperfect. If it's perfect, something is wrong. It's very sterile, mm -hmm. and it becomes a robot. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the irony, right? Like the the beauty part of it is the beautiful part of it is that being imperfect <laughs> makes it really you know, beautiful, Clay right? Product, you know, I will return to the to the energy just to say this because. I like how this communication is going that we are all the time overlapping and just moving around coming back uh you know clay models in cars that they make first clay models one to one you know that still uh, robots can't make them and they are some of the highest paid artists that they make them with their hands you know why never robots will be able to make it because there is their emotion in the surface there is their emotion in the surface the person that's making it is his emotion when machine makes it literally looks too sterile i mean maybe tomorrow we will combine with machines terminator will happen matrix i don't know but if there is no emotion there is no good surface it doesn't go through the eyes good coming back to the energy uh it's interesting thing that we everybody mentioned it in their own way but why did i want to talk about it because everybody today is talking about energy me included and we are all talking about energy and this to cut the story short, energy is emotion in the motion. It's literally your emotion that you have inside of you moving forward or backward or on the side or on the top. So what it happens? I want to make this. That's what I feel here. And this will attract everything that it needs to attract because there is a positive energy about it. It doesn't mean that everything will be nice, but eventually we are going through a smooth sailing. For example, I really like joining your podcast. That's why this conversation is going smoothly because my emotion that is going in motion towards you guys is something that I feel and I feel comfortable talking with you. So my energy is comfortable to you. I hope that you are also feeling comfortable with me even though I talk a lot. But yeah, you really make it easy. Emotion in motion. Yeah. It's just it, it, <laughs> So it's just simple emotion in the motion. There is nothing super scientific about it. Simple emotion in the motion. What you feel mm -hmm. is what you attract. Done. Yeah. Done. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very positive way to end it. Like, don't mind me cutting it, but like yeah. emotion in the motion, it's <laughs> it's a really way to put it. Okay, goodbye, guys. Really cool. <laughs> See ya, dude. <laughs> nah, this is this is the first goodbye. But um, yeah, man, thank you so much for joining us so again. Thank you so much. If I can say it, like yeah. this went a completely different route than I was thinking of. <laughs> like I thought, like oh, the, he was like an industrial designer. This will be very rational and sterile, and like it will be very dry. And let's have technical conversations. And it went this most wonderful way of talking about all sorts of things about life. And thank you so much for Those that, man. Conversations are no, thank awesome. you guys for allowing me to talk and for providing me a good energy when we touch each other. 
<laughs> providing good <laughs> energy so I can share this because if there wasn't a comfortable energy for me, it wouldn't happen. So thank you very much for that. I'm glad it was a good experience. I hope our <laughs> viewers also got something from this. And yeah, um, all I can say is that you guys all stay creative, take care of yourselves, do your best and have a good one. We hope to see you in the next episode. And yeah, well, leave us, you know, a comment or something with your thoughts on any of the topics that we've been discussing during this wide range topic episode, which I love a lot. And I know I say this a lot, but this really demands like a second part or something in the future, man. I would really like to keep talking about these things with you. We are making so. a series oh. about Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a playlist for this only. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thank with you a, so much a, a soundtrack also <laughs> that would be dope <laughs> thank you so we much everyone thanks guys see you in the next episode no problem see you guys bye bye <laughs>